Welcome to CNU News, your source for video news on campus. I'm Victoria Shirley. And I'm Justin Dez. Thanks for joining us today. In this week's episode, we'll bring you the latest information about how a sorority helped a little girl in need. Although it's a great cause, it's really great now to be able to personalize it and be able to give back to the local community. We'll also give you the lowdown on a drug that is known as legal marijuana. The CNU Social Work Association held an event with the AIDS Fund. We'll tell you what it was all about. Do you think going to a small school hurts your resume? Find out what senior students have to say. Be sure to stick around. Because we've got it all right here on CNU News. Spice, it's a legal drug that resembles the effects of marijuana, but how is it safe to use? Reporter Tim Kramis has the information. Incense, legal exotic herbal blend, beautiful fragrant aroma. Not for human consumption, not for the sale to minors. What is it about the new incense that is causing such a stir? Spice, a chemical designed by Clemson University graduate students to mimic the effects of marijuana. It is cheaper, legal to buy, and not detectable on many drug tests. But how is this new weed legally sold at many retail establishments? So, you know, we kind of think spice falls under that category where th there is a, a potential to abuse it or misuse it. But, um, you know, that that's not what a lot of, that's not what most people are doing. Most people are using it responsibly. JWH-018 is actually marketed as incense, although consumption is the new popular use. Spice is sold from gas stations to head shops and even hookah bars. I recently spoke with Jay Sedwick, the owner of Lazy Day's Hookah Lounge in Newport News, to discuss the topic of spice. It's something that has um, a dual use. You know, it it is an incense. That's what the manufacturers are intending it to be. That's what a large amount of people are buying it as as incense but then you have smaller groups of people that want to do whatever they can to kind of escape the existential realities of their day-to-day -day lives and want to get messed up. I met up with some CNU students and graduates who were interested in trying the product but wanted to keep their faces off camera. Uh, I guess I feel high if you want to say that. Uh... I don't know. It's not. It's not really the same thing as what I thought it was going to be, but it's. Uh, I'm definitely not the same as I was before. Functional, just a little buzzed. Yeah, it's not bad. I wouldn't recommend it or anything. I don't think you should smoke too much of it. Uh, it's definitely kind of harsh. I feel like. Um, yeah, I wouldn't ha say that a good extended use of it would be a good thing. For now, Spice remains to be sold legally at retail establishments despite users' thoughts on the product. And it's just not something I would want to be partaking in on a daily basis. For CNU TV, I'm Tim Krems. Alpha Phi held their annual fundraiser cardiac arrest recently. This year was a little bit different than previous years. I attended the event to bring you the story. Alpha Phi holds an event every year called Cardiac Arrest to raise money for their philanthropy. Cardiac Arrest is our annual fall philanthropy event. Uh, we build a jail in the middle of the David Student Union and we arrest quote unquote local celebrities on campus. Uh, so we'll arrest organization leaders and we'll also arrest people like Miss Linda and very popular professors. This year the event raised money for a four-year-old girl with a rare heart problem. She, uh, it's called congenitally corrected transposition <clears throat> of the great vessels. Eventually what it means is that the low pressure pumping chamber, because it's on the high pressure side, it's doing work that it's not prepared to do and it will fail. Aurora and her family visited CNU and Alpha Phi welcomed her with applause. She and her younger brother were given gifts that were paid for by the donations raised that day. Every philanthropy event we do, we just send off the money to the Alpha Phi Foundation, which, although it's a great cause, it's really great now to be able to personalize it and be able to give back to the local community here in Newport News and to be able to give back to such a deserving little girl. It really means a lot. That's what's so overwhelming. It's like, my child, <laughs> it's a little overwhelming, I guess. If you want to learn more about Aurora and her condition, you can visit her Facebook page. 
For CNU News, I'm Victoria Shirley. The CNU community came together for a food drive in the Triple Plaza this fall. Cast Vision was there to show you how it went. Recently, CNU Center for Service Learning teamed up with the Food Bank of the Virginia Peninsula for the Help Hungry Homes initiative. The goal? Raise money and food donations for the less fortunate in the local community. We have student groups who have been collecting, competing. We called it the Weight of Hunger Challenge. And, and so we were trying to see who could collect the most food and money. So we've got, I don't know, Interfraternity Council participated. The student athletes did an amazing job. They, they got over nine pallets of food from the local neighborhoods. Over 25,000 pounds of food and over $4,000 in cash donations were raised through the event, providing families in need with meals this holiday season. All it takes is one student, one quarter, one meal, one can to make a difference. And that's what the CNU students did. It's great to see CNU students helping out the local community. For CNU News, I'm Cassie Vinch. The CNU Social Work Association joined forces with the AIDS Fund to bring a free HIV testing event to the DSU. Sam Thrift reports right now from the ballroom. How's the event going, Sam? It's going well, Victoria. Behind me is the DSU or there's free testing for AIDS today. If you want to follow me, we're going to go through the AIDS testing process right now. Inside the ballroom, the AIDS Fund of Norfolk, Virginia tested CNU students for HIV AIDS and I had a first-hand experience of the process. We're trying to get the importance of early intervention, you know, a lot of people don't know their, you know, a lot of people don't know their stats or anything when it comes to HIV. Um, they don't think it could happen to them, so we're just trying to bring awareness to the campus. Approximately one in five people infected with HIV are unaware of their status. Because knowledge is power, it's important to get tested if you feel you may be at risk. Can you tell me what made you want to get tested today? I think that it's time that I got tested because I haven't been tested before. Getting tested is easier than you might think. After using an oral swab on your gums and on the inside of your cheeks, all that is left is a 20-minute wait for the results. After much anticipation, she delivered the news. Okay, your test came back non-reactive, okay. <laughs> which means that there are no presently no antibodies present in your blood for the okay. HIV virus. Even if we test one person all day long, one, that's one, pers one more person who has the knowledge and who does know what their status is, and that's the important thing. So like they say, Victoria, knowledge is power, so get tested, know your status. From the DSU for CNU News, I'm Sam Thrift. Dr. Jerry Jordan visited the Ferguson Center to discuss how pumping money into government is doing the country harm. Let's take a look. So not only was the United States hit by this, it was those ripple effects that went all the way around the world. BBNT Colloquium presented an event called the Fallacy of Economic Stimulus. Today, Dr. Jerry Jordan addressed the issues of this topic to the public and to the students here at Christopher Newport University's Ferguson Center for the Arts. So what do you think about the speech and what did you get from it? Well, it was great to hear somebody from the Federal Reserve actually give us a different side of the story of what's going on rather than what we're constantly being told in the mainstream media. And I felt his opinion was very refreshing to hear. And it was something that I very well agree with and it very spark much well sparked my interest. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought he had a lot of great points. Um, he had a lot of new kind of right up to the minute theories, honestly. Um, you know, I was watching the news today and he was talking about quantitative easing and unemployment and all that and he went and hit on a lot of those topics and had some in interesting things to say. After speaking with the students I got a chance to talk to Dr. Jerry Jordan about what he was hoping the students would get out of his speech. Well the main idea is that what happened to us in this economic contraction the last couple of years was very different than has happened to us in a very long time and that's why government actions through money and borrowing and spending can't reduce unemployment and make us prosperous again. It's just not possible. Well, that was Dr. Jordan's speech from CNN News. I'm Justin Demps. Do you think attending a small school will hurt your resume? Well, Tim Krems hit the streets to find out how students around campus feel about it. Does the size of your school matter when it comes time to look for a job after college? I asked CNU students and faculty what they thought. Well, you know, I feel prestige plays a really big part in getting a job and if, you know you're at a disadvantage with that with any small school I feel so yeah I, I guess it would depend on what kind of job you're looking to get if it's like if you want to be a lawyer or if you're I mean having a degree from UVA would probably be better but if you're going for like a teaching degree like I think that small schools are known for like their teaching programs when it comes time for me to graduate um, I think it's be much easier for me 
to find a job as compared to students on like a larger campus just because at a larger campus you don't have that whole closeness with an academic advisor such as what you get here at CNU. I do feel like when you're applying for a job and you're from a larger school sometimes they do have a more well-known reputation or a better reputation so it would put you at a slight disadvantage but I also feel like regardless of where you went to school if you have a good GPA and good involvement where you went that that just makes you look good in general. So. That's all we have for you today for CNU News. I'm Justin Dennis. Thanks for joining us. And I'm Victoria Shirley. Make sure to stay up to date with what's going on around campus. You're seeing UTV.org? And thecaptainslog.org. We have new online episodes and a fresh newspaper every Wednesday just for you. See you next time.